Hi guys. At the most recent Phone Flinging Skirmish, which was number five, which happened uh, ooh, two weekends ago, I think, uh, my mask that I bought, my big helmet with the face mask thing, uh, because of the weather and how sweaty I was, even that started fogging up. The visor in the front started fogging up. And to be honest, not being able to see ruins your entire experience, like needing to be able to see where you're walking, what you're walking into, who might be shooting at you, who you are trying to shoot at. They're kind of important things, um, which is the whole reason why I bought the mask. I was incredibly disappointed by the poor performance of the visor in the conditions that it was in. In the summer, it was perfect, no issues whatsoever, but in the damp months where it's wet and miserable and I'm a hot, sweaty mess, it just wasn't able to cope, even with me constantly moving. So after it finished, uh, I thought about how I could possibly improve it, seeing as the visor is replaceable. I thought I could perhaps use it like an anti-fogging type spray, but all of the feedback on all of the sites are that they are crap. Particularly if the anti-fog stuff fogs up anyway, the anti-fogging spray isn't gonna help you. It's just the way that you are. You're a sweaty person that's gonna fog up a visor. So I set about converting uh, or creating a visor made out of mesh. And this is my video to show you how I did it. I hope you guys enjoy. As I just mentioned, I'm gonna replace the visor here with some mesh. Uh, at the latest foam flinging skirmish, which was number five, the weather was so damp, even with all the airflow coming through here, this still fogged up and I've done some reading and whilst I could get like an anti-fogging uh, spray, the reviews of them aren't very good. So my thought was, I'll get some mesh. I got a friend to measure his mesh goggles and these were the, move this out the way a second. This is the type of mesh that it recommended, which is like a, a two millimeter hole. Uh, and I ordered that and I thought, well, well, maybe a bigger hole would be better. And it sort of is, but because the metal in between is much thicker, it actually causes more of a hindrance. So this is actually the, the stuff I'm gonna use. Um, I don't know exactly how I'm going to go about doing it. I've got a bunch of tools that I'm going to use um, and we'll see where we get to. Um, once I get it in, into a shape, I want to sand all this down, both front and back. It might need a wash because some of this feels a little bit sticky. Don't know what that's from. Um, I'll put a link in the description to the company that I used to order the mesh from. It's It wasn't particularly expensive, but it wasn't cheap either. This was like £4.85 for this tiny little sheet, which is, for what it is, probably quite expensive, but I don't want to order tons of the stuff. So for hobbyist material, if you're willing to pay uh, a fiver for it, includes postage, I was well happy with it. So I'm going to remove the visor. I'm going to try and uh, measure it up. I'm going to trace a template onto the, the paper, cut the paper out, draw that onto here hopefully and then I've got some tin snips that'll snip the outline out and then hopefully if it's all working well I can use my rolling pin I might need to get my hammer but rolling pins to bend this into the shape of the visor uh, I'm going to find out now but I did check earlier I don't think there's any holes in the visor um, where any of the screws and bolts and things go through the actual visor plastic again we will find out in a moment once that's been done, I'm going to sand it down. I'm going to paint it. That won't be tonight because the weather is awful. Uh, I'm going to paint it black and then I'm going to do a matte clear coat. I'll let it uh, dry out for however long until the smell goes away. And then I will fit it and we'll see what it looks like. So let's get on. So the thing I like about this is this should just unclip out from either side. And now I've got a visor to work with. There's a handful of screws on the inside. Uh, I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So.
that's quite nice and easy. And there we have the visor. So, ignore that bit. So we need to trace basically this shape. I'm, I'm imagining it working sort of like that. I'm probably closer to that, so we're not wasting as much. So, first things first. Let us trace this. Okay, before we start with this, I'm gonna put some masking tape around, am I, should I put some masking tape around the edges? Just to uh, protect them, yeah. You've got the tape, you might as well use it. It's not gonna hurt. The good thing about this is because the, vi the visor comes out, the um, you can make as many of these as you want, really and it would be no real problem. Okay, that looks good to me. So, now the tricky part. At least I think it's the tricky part. Let's start with this bit. Okay, that looks more or less all right to me. Where the hell did that lid go? There it is. I wasn't expecting the marker to go through the paper, so that's going to cause me some trouble. And brand new. Only me and the internet know what happened. Shh, don't tell my wife. Done with that, done with that. No, I haven't done with that. So, now, let's cut. The bit that has me worried is the bending this. Bending this into shape afterwards. But that's later me's problem. Right, so this is almost exactly the right size there. So what I might do then is let's go the bigger footprint. And then do the same on the other side, and then I can just trace around 
the outline. Hopefully get nothing on the just in the safe side. Add that a little bit there. I think that's it. Let's see how insane I was. specifically for this job because the other option was getting um, a hacksaw or something and I just didn't want to so I'm just going to go cut along that black line oh, I forgot how hard this was There we go, applies to the rest of you. Right, uh, I just need to bend these into shape and then offer them up and see where we end up. See, I was, uh, my plan, let's get that out of the way, that out of the way, was to use the rolling pin to just sort of help me bend this into shape. Not really. Four. 
this particular application. <laughs> I don't want to push too hard on our table because it's glass. So just gently rolling it until it eventually that seems to respond better to bending by finger. Nearly, we're getting there. We are getting there. And it's just a case of, I'm guessing, a little bit of trimming up top and down below. But that's okay. That is okay. assumption that that bottom bit is fine. Just trim those two inside edges a tad. Right, let's have a little look and see how that is offered up on that side. Right. Oh, that's much better. Not quite perfect, but I think that'll do. So, now what we'll do, I do need to bend that back a lot. Right, how is that looking? Not looking too bad, I could take another, take a little bit more off. And 
here. Right, okay, I think. I think we're good for a test. Let us. Together, let's try this. Another way around. No, it's never going to work because you're an idiot. So, what I'm going to do is I will fix one of these and then slide this in from the top. don't need it to be perfect because I need to take it back out so so now if I slide that in right will it interfere with any of the other bits oh there you go think I think that's pretty cool. So next steps is sand it, wash it, paint it. Oh, yeah, sand it, maybe a bit of filing, wash it, paint it, put it all back together. Okay, I will be back once this has been washed and painted. Right, so we're back. This has been painted with matte black base coat and then uh, matte clear coat over the top and left to dry for about 24 hours now. Uh, before I do uh, a fit and uh, put it all back together, I thought it would be worth testing to see how much heavier this might be. It's uh, going to make no material value, I'm going to be using it regardless. But I thought it'd be interesting to see how much extra weight is going to be on the uh, on my face. So this plastic one weighs thirty-two point eight grams. This metal one weighs forty-nine point six nine grams. So not a lot. That's uh, acceptable. Just under 20 gram difference. Right, let's get this thing back together. We, we are ready to roll. We want to see what this thing looks like.
and that looks awesome. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's. I think that's going to be decent. Back together now. As some people would say, I'm happy with that. So, yeah, I hope you guys like what I've done and I uh, hope I've given you some ideas if you want to do something similar yourself. Now I shall hand you over to Cowboy Me to say goodbye. And there you have it. That's the entire video done. I'm not sure at this point, because I haven't reviewed the footage, how well the placement of the tripod and the table that I was using was. Hopefully it's good and you can see it all. But if you haven't been able to see it that clearly, this is what it now looks like. Uh, I think that looks quite menacing, uh, but I've tried it on and I've had a little go and I think uh, it's not going to cause any problems for me in terms of being able to see, which is the important bit. Uh, I just don't know how it's going to handle moisture and that kind of stuff. So we'll have to see. The thing needs to, um, it, it's had 24 hours to dry out. My, it's going to be left now in a fairly closed off space so hopefully it's gonna that that paint smell will have gone away the next FFS isn't for a few months so it's got loads of time to kind of air out and get rid of that horrible paint smell that you get. I hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, if you have don't forget to give me a thumbs up and leave a comment down in the comment section. If you haven't subscribed yet you can click this button right by here and if you want some more footage you can click this button right by here. I'll catch you guys next time.